Good evening, everybody. Matrix here, and here's my watch list for April 8th. Okay, taking a look at the futures here real quick. Wow, this is a very interesting in the, um, this is where we closed, okay? And uh, at the open, we had a little dip and rip, okay? As the futures came up, it tested almost, almost to the 2900s here. Um, it topped out at 2899.50. And then from there it dumped. Okay, uh, we have now at midnight a gap down, and uh, currently we are holding at this uh, April fifth, twelve forty p.m. lows. Okay, so uh, I want to I want to talk some theories here, right? Uh, some thesis. Okay, so let's bring in the spy chart. Spy, right here. Let's blow it up real quick. Okay, you'll see uh, there's a few lines that I've drawn here. The red line here, this is the highs of uh, the futures, uh, the equivalent to the two, uh, two, uh, the 2899.50 area, okay? Uh, this is where we closed on the SPY on Friday, and the blue line is the current price, as I marked off here at 1240, and this is a five-minute chart, okay? So current price, we're right here, we're gapping down a little bit, uh, the screen line is a support area that I have marked off, and I will show you where I found this support area. Now, what I want to see tomorrow is, uh, depending on how the futures hold from here, right, um, we are gapping down a little bit. So at the open, I want to see a pop uh, to close the gap a little bit. Uh, really watch this yesterday's closing price here at 288.50s, and then from there, whether it uh, reclaims, then uh, it should test these highs again at 289.20. Uh, if it fails, then we are coming back down, and this uh, should be a big pull. Um, this is basically the the rug pull I'm looking for uh, a few days ago. And uh, from there, we might pull down to 287.20 and uh, perhaps beyond. We might have a big rug pull day tomorrow. Uh, let's take a look at the dailies here. So the thesis is a pop and drop, uh, fill the gap and drop or fill the gap and rip and then hit this resistance and drop. Taking a look here, um, <clears throat> the same lines here, uh, the red and the blue line and of course the green uh, support area, this 287.20s is basically uh, the previous day's closing price right here, right, as you can see. So um, this has to hold for it to uh, continue tomorrow, for, for this uh, uptrend to continue tomorrow, in my opinion. If it doesn't, uh, it's gonna come down, and uh, here's the 286.73, which is the first uh, support after, and then we have to 286.30s, maybe even 286, okay? So uh, expecting a red day tomorrow, in my opinion. So coming back over here, zooming out a little bit, looking at the daily chart again, and uh, zooming in back to the day where we had the big tank on SPY, right? Um, these resistance and support lines fit perfectly right now. Um, yeah, 286 and change, 287. I, I do like to see it test this uh, resistance line again and fail. Um, the reason why I think it's going to fail, though, um, there's a psychological reason for this. Okay, um, I don't think it's going to get over tomorrow. If it wanted to get over, it would have gotten over uh, on the futures right here. So let's bring back up the futures chart right here. Uh, as you see this big tick up, right, uh, we have a doji candle. If it wanted to get over, it would have popped over just a little bit and then came back down and held this level or held around this level and then run back up. Right now, uh, the, the, the futures is uh, failed to hold this 28.97.5, right? Um, this shows weakness, because this was the last area of support, in my opinion. Um, if it wanted to go, psychologically, I think it would have gotten to like at least 20, uh, 29, it, it would have ticked above the 2900 mark in my opinion, take the belt a little bit and then fail and hold and then rip again. 
and uh, but it didn't, right? It, it just came right under it, and then people are starting to sell again, and uh, I think tomorrow we might see some panic. Okay, so that's my thought on the SPY overall. Uh, let's get into the watch list, okay? So first up, we have JD. Uh, JD had a nice little run up for the past few days. Overall, I mean, as the SPY ripped uh, for the past week, uh, we also see JD come up as well. And um, we are running, uh, on Friday, we ran into uh, prior resistance and uh, dipped a little bit. Now, it, Definitely looks like uh, JD is running in accordance to the SPY. So um, I really don't think it can get over. Uh, first of all, I think the first resistance level is here. Yesterday's highs at 3150s, right? So I'm going to mark that off. Okay. And now that we're gapping down a little bit, it really depends on the support here. Uh, we are actually currently sitting at a very decent support price at uh, 3120s as you can see it made on friday but i uh, we are gapping down a little bit so um probably at around just a tad under 31 i think right so this also is a very key area right here at the 31 okay as you can see it helps so anywhere from 31 to 3190s this is the first support area now i want to see it fill the gap um if it gaps down which most likely will uh, i want to see it fill gap back up and then fail so uh looking here at uh, 3140 as well we have a nice resistance area on friday like an intraday resistance area right um and then we have the 3150s as well here 3150s 3160s Oh, excuse me. Um, over here, thirty-one sixty-two five. Uh, it's close enough. So give it some wiggle room, right? Around it's it's never like a precise price, but more of like an area that I anticipate the stock to reject. And if it does pull tomorrow, uh, where would my target be? Right. Uh, I like the target of um this area right here. Let's see, the opening price at $30.70 would be my first target if I'm looking for that short, right? Because this made pretty heavy support area. As you can see, if you draw a horizontal line across, right? Uh, from April 1st, it made support and then resistance here, April 3rd, resistance here, April 4th, and uh, reclaimed. So I do anticipate it to hold a little bit and uh, it struggle to fall when it comes to this uh, 200 SMA on the five minute chart as well as here on the daily level. This level is very key, the $30.70, okay? So we're gonna mark that off. Now I wanna take a look at JD and the average true range here real quick. So let me get to my FinBiz and uh, I like this ticker um, for tomorrow. Okay, so the average true range is a dollar oh four. Um, I think seeing it come back down to thirty dollars and seventy cents from the highs here is a really really doable. This is almost a point, right? So that's uh, that fits the average true range. That's the move I'll be looking for. Either a short from here, the highs, or here, and. Uh, Perhaps if it shows me a double bottom or higher low from the thirty dollars and seventy cents, I I might uh, select to long it. So let me save these drawings right now, real quick here, just so I don't have to do them again tomorrow morning. Okay. So that's safe. Uh, that would be JD. Next up, we have Roku. Uh, Roku is more of a side watch. Uh, JD is going to be one of my main watch now. I want to take a look at this daily chart real quick. Um, we had a nice uh, downgrade, which caused Roku to fail, and then an upgrade, which caused Roku to come back up. Now we see a pattern here, right? Uh, as this thing pops, it pulls two days, pops, it pulls a little bit, pop, pop, pull, 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 and then downgrade, 
Um, it definitely looks like it's on an uptrend, right? Um, it's it's bouncing off an uptrend line. So uh, I'm definitely going to draw this uptrend line for tomorrow and uh, see what it does. Um, I don't think the stock is a buy yet unless it holds this uptrend at the 62, uh, 62.50 area. Okay, so let's take a look here. 62.50. We have the low of yesterday, 62.50. So I do want to see it bounce off 62.50. Okay, and make a double bottom here and a higher low to get long. Okay, uh, we do have some support here around the 63 area. Just gonna mark that off real quick. And uh, gonna watch for holding, right? Higher lows to long the stock. Um, it's sold off a lot. And I do, um, I do like it for a retracement day. Um, but of course, I'm going to keep an open mind. I mean, if if 62.50 falls through, then I'm going to give up on the long idea and I'm going to target the 60 on the short side, right? Uh, I want to see it fall through hard, though, and then come back up and fail in one of these areas and then short it from there. Um, overall, there are a lot of shorts piled in on Roku. There always have been. So uh, when the squeeze happens, it does. Uh, it's going to be very violent. Okay, uh, key, key resistance area, 65 to 65.50. As uh, I've been watching Roku for over a week now, okay, 65 and 65.50 is a very concise resistance area, okay. So I could uh, take more of a speculative trade and uh, anticipate the breakout and squeeze. I think short sellers are piled in here at the 65 to 65 50s. If it holds above, then definitely gonna squeeze. It's also 90 MA here on the daily chart. We are running into a lot of resistance. Um, I guess the best thing to long though, um, definitely looking for a double bottom or higher low from here from these areas, uh, depending on what the stock will do tomorrow. Uh, with the SPY dipping, uh, gapping down a little bit, so I do anticipate this to gap down. If it gaps down under 63, we'll, we'll have to wait and see, right? Um, this area here at the 63.70s area, 63.80s, okay? This is a very nice resistance area on the intraday short term. Okay, so um, overall, I want to play it against the 63. And uh, just play it between the 63 and 65, right? I only want to play from this area and this area. So I want to long around this area. I want to short from this area. And uh, we'll look for uh, candlestick signals to uh, confirm the thesis, whether I want to go long or short on that day. Okay, so that's uh, Roku. Lift is next. Now, uh, aside from... Just talking about Lyft here, uh, I want to talk about um, a recap on Lyft, okay? So Lyft doesn't, it's a recent IPO that's been on for a week now, and it doesn't really have much daily chart history, okay? Uh, I longed it on Friday right here out of the gates, and I can explain that real quick. Um, interestingly enough, I mean, if you draw this uptrend, okay, it's following the uptrend line real nicely. Uh, Lyft is going to move, uh, not going to move in accordance to the market in my opinion because it's the IPO and uh, it's still fresh. The $72 mark is the IPO price, right? So uh, as the stock opened first day on IPO and sold off and then eventually after a few days it reclaimed the 72 this is why I, I longed it, okay? Um, there are a lot of short sellers piled in. A lot of people are saying that um, Lyft does not make money, so they are shorting it for that fundamental reason. But to be quite honest, as you can see, every time it breaks this uptrend, uh, sorry, it breaks this downtrend, it squeezes hard, right? Um, on Friday, 
I was looking for the 72 to hold, right? And then uh, basically what it did was it gapped up above 72. And that was basically it for me. That was the thesis for me to go long on that day, um, thinking that, uh, okay, it has gapped up above a key, key resistance area, also a very um, special key IPO price, right? Um, this overall in the market psychology this is a big big price point here at 72 so once it got back up and above 72 um the buyers are starting to think bullish okay as it gapped up and uh it gapped up above 73 as well i was basically playing along against the 7350 to 73 area okay and uh Let's zoom in a little bit here on the one minute chart and I'll show you how I got in. I basically got in around, uh, I got in on the first, no, right here on this candle, okay? I got in as it broke out of 74 and then it quickly failed, but I held my ground, okay? I got in on two lots here, but once it started failing here, I got out one lot and I held one piece. I held a small piece and uh, basically I was playing it. That small piece, I was uh, trusting my bias basically and I was playing it against the 73 on the small piece, right? Um, as you can see here, pre-market, I think I was playing it even higher than 73, around the 73.25 as it uh, made some pre-market areas here. And uh, of course here, uh, the 7350, the pre-market highs, right? So I was playing it against uh, this 7350 area, and then I held this one piece. It came down on me, right? And then I saw it quickly reverse. And uh, from here, uh, I waited, and I saw this come back down, and I literally added right here as it came right through the 7350 area. Because... Uh, what I'm thinking is, this is a, the psychology of a gap and go, right? If it didn't want 74 and break out, it wouldn't have shot through, okay? Uh, the thing is, it shot through uh, on the tape. I was reading the tape, and basically, it was a lot of green prints on the offer side, right? And they were holding the offers around the 74. It broke through, Okay. And um, when it came down, if it was weak, if it was weak from this candle on, it should have uh, tested around around uh, this area, the pre mark, uh, the opening lows, and failed from here and keep coming down. But it didn't. When it came down, the next candle it popped right back up. This was when I know that they wanted higher. Okay, and this is where I added actually full size from here. And I got my average from uh, back to 73, 73 area. And I just rode it all the way up to the 75. Okay, uh, I, I got out around this area and I left a small piece. As it came down, held VWAP, I still held that small blot. And then eventually, once it failed VWAP, I got out. But... Uh, my very last piece of this up move was paid around the 75 area as that that was what my target was intentionally anyways because overall here on the daily chart as you can see first of all 75 is a very key psychological level here on the hourly chart this is where it failed right on 75 so i was just looking for the 75 price target maybe even 76 but i i never anticipated it to keep uh, to get up to 76. Now, interestingly enough, uh, Citroen Research came up with a tweet and they went bullish on it. And this candle with the massive volume at 10, 18 a.m., um, this was when they tweeted. So Citroen Research is long on this ticker right now. And uh, I think uh, they might be using 74, 73, 50 as like their supports area. Um, how far do they want it? They never came out with a target on it, but I'm thinking they might sell out here at the 78 level. Okay. Um, knowing that so many shorts piled in, uh, 
and knowing that the stock reclaimed the 72 IPO price and also seeing that the chart was following an uptrend ever since it started bouncing and reclaimed this 9 EMA here, right? It basically held the 9 EMA as well. Uh, I was pretty good on my thesis on the bullish side of things. Um, will it go up tomorrow? Uh, definitely don't know. So let's take a look at some support areas, right? So zooming out here real quick. Uh, the first area of support I'm thinking is 74. Okay, so I'm going to mark that off. Area of support. And, uh, and then we have 73.40 which is right around here, right around here. And then we also have, is this, yeah, this was Friday. And then finally the support area of 73, okay? So these are the support areas. As long as these support areas hold, I am gonna keep my long bias on it. Now, um, how I derived these uh, levels here, real quick. So 73 was uh, right here. Where is it? It's right around yesterday's highs. Okay, you know what, let me zoom out. It's, it's this high right here, this is 73, right? Um, and then we have the 7340s area, which is basically right about here on daily chart, uh, sorry, on the hourly chart, if you see, it's right here, okay? And then the 74 area, which is the high of the first hour candle right here. Okay, we are sitting currently at 74.23, pulling in very close to the trend line, as well as sitting a little bit on top of the 9 EMA. So um, I do think uh, tomorrow at the open, we get a little dip, hit the 74 and start bouncing, That's uh, that would be ideal. Or maybe even dip to the 73, 40s area and then bounce from there, okay? Now, I also wanna talk about one thing, is uh, looking at the Friday day action here, um, short sellers probably once again piled in here and uh, they probably have some sort of um, stop loss set above the 74, 75 area. So this is gonna be my first resistance. Uh, I'll be looking for, if it pops up and through, uh, we might get the weak hand shorts to start squeezing out. And then the next area of resistance is the key psychological hole number of 75. Also, uh, I think shorts are using this nice hole number as a stop out area. And then from here, uh, we have the 75.50 as well where technically this is kind of like where the stock failed, the first lower high on the five minute chart. And I think this is where the shorts started to pile in here. Okay, so three areas of resistance. And of course we cannot forget the high of day, which is $76. Okay, so will it get above $76 tomorrow? I definitely don't know, but I like to see it try. Uh, opening dip, if these, area starts holding, uh, I will try to long it if it shows me like a double bottom or a higher low from here. Coincidentally, we do see it following the 200 SMA here on the five minute chart. It's a nice little reversal here, okay? Um, I also wanna note that, I mean, overall Lyft is still a piece of shit on the fundamental side, but so is Tesla, you know what I mean? So it's really hard just to base the thesis on lift, uh, just from the fundamentals, I follow price action, right? Price action is king. Um, we have crossed over a nice resistance area and held as support. We are on an uptrend. Uh, we also have uh, the intraday fundamental catalyst of Citroen tweeting that they're long, uh, right here, that they're long, and uh, you know what, let's plot some Fibonacci's, right? From the swing high to low, okay? Now, uh, this 79.60s area is pretty key. Uh, 
the 50% mark here is right at the 77 area. So right around here is where I'm looking uh, at Citroen to kind of take profits, right? Uh, overall, uh, I don't think the shorts have given up, but uh, it, it will, it does look like it's uh, still retracing a little bit, right? Okay, so uh, I'm gonna try to ride this up. Um, one day at a time until it shows me a sign of a failed trend. Okay, right now it's still running on this uptrend. Okay, so that's lift. Finally, we have AMD. AMD is definitely gonna be my main watch for me, okay? So uh, I wanna bring in the cues here real quick. Okay, so the big picture is the cues here. Uh, tech sector um, running pretty well. I don't know if the spy polling will hold the cues as well, but my initial thesis is that the big picture, the cues are ripping. Um, the intraday fundamentals wise, we have uh, April 3rd here, uh, where RBC reiterated their outperform rating on AMD, saying that their market shares uh, would probably have gained on the on the PC and the notebook side, citing an article published by DigiTimes, okay? So this is what caused the pop. And overall, uh, the stock itself looks pretty strong, in my opinion, here on the hourly chart. Even on the daily chart, it looks pretty strong. But um, on Friday, it pulled and held a higher low. So it's still on an uptrend. It's just a quick pull, in my opinion. Um, let's take a look here. Technical side. So let's mark off some support and resistance. I do like this for a long. So support areas, I have uh, 2880s marked off, which is yesterday's lows, as well as 2860s, previous day's lows. And finally, we have 2840s, okay? 2840s, okay? Uh, let's take a look at the 2840s real quick. I don't know where I got 2840s from. Yeah, 2840. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember now. Daily chart, 2840s. Daily chart. Okay, so zoom out a little bit right there 2840s okay so three areas of support and uh resistance would be 29 to 2910 is my first area of resistance so there's 2910 to 29 okay nice whole number 10 cent area i don't want to take position around this area i want to see it reclaim this 2910 to take a long um we are in the holding zone here. Um, where's my next level? Next level is at 2920, which is uh, the prior day on, on uh, Thursday. You see that it held a little bit. And then finally, we have uh, 2940, okay? 29.40 on Thursday, basically the highs, right? And uh, this is where it failed. I shorted it on this day from the 29.35s and I brought it all the way back down, okay? So playing within the, these range, if the stock market continues or if the stock continues to be strong tomorrow, I do expect uh, these uh, support levels to hold. I'm looking for a dip out the gate since the SPY is gapping down a little bit. Hold. Uh, the support area, and then uh, take it long, uh, perhaps try the highs again, okay? Um, that's basically my thesis on AMD. It's going to be my main watch for me. The infliction point is $28 uh, August 3rd when the news came out. And um, yeah, uh, pretty big deal. I mean, citing that AMD gaining market shares, that will definitely get investors happy to uh, get long. Ooh, I also want to talk about Intel. So bring in my news feed here. Intel is a direct competitor of uh, AMD, right? So 
if Intel shares are falling, then AMD should be going up. I believe they did get a downgrade. Yeah, they did. They got a downgrade here on uh, April 5th. So more reasons for me to like AMD on the bullish side. Um, I want to get back to JD first, actually. There's a piece of news here on JD. I do like JD for a quick poll tomorrow, uh, namely because of this news, okay? Timely call buying and JD expiri ex expiring contracts, okay? Um, it showed that on Friday, um, the balancing was a lot to the buy side. So um, it makes sense for them to balance it out on Monday or tomorrow to uh, pull the price back down to uh, equilibrium and sell a little bit since JD is running into prior resistance and it's getting a little bit uh, overextended from the 9 EMA. So looking for a test and fail. JD, AMD, main, main watch, Roku and Lyft, side watch. I know uh, the watch list was a little bit too long tonight, but I had a lot of uh, detail explanation and thoughts I wanted to get through. I hope you guys enjoyed my analysis and I'll see you guys all bright and early tomorrow. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and have a great evening. Ciao.